Welcome to College Kitchen. I'm Jeremy Sunder, and this season, my co-host Christy Clements and I will be giving you an inside look into the culinary scene here in Boston. We'll be cooking with some of the city's premier chefs and showing you some great places to indulge your taste buds. Today, we're checking out Fumami, an Asian sandwich bar located in the Financial District. But first, let's check in with Lauren Mandel, who will be showing us some delicious sweets this season. Hi, I'm Lauren Mandel, and welcome to Sweet Talk. Today, we're at one of the North End's hidden gems, Maria's Pastry Shop. So join us as we check out some family-oriented treats. Uh, about Maria's Pastry Shop, I think what it is, it's uh, uh, old-fashioned, traditional. Uh, uh, over here, it's like you're in your grandmother's house. There is the yelling, there is the learning, and there is everything else. That's about Maria's Pastry Shop, it's family. There is the good thing and there is the bad thing. The good thing, the usual family, they don't quit when you yell or you disagree. After two seconds, everything is gone. Look at Maria Pastry Shop, it's like, uh, like you bake at home, like it's a home style. It's no commercial, it's no, you don't follow recipe. It's a, an adventure all the time you make something, even if it's the same thing you make it over and over again. The hardest thing is the time involved. Uh, as an owner, you have less time to, you know, vacation, uh, take off. Uh, not just because you're the boss or you're the owner, uh, you can do, you've got free time. As a good owner, you always got to be in your business. You always got to watch. You can have as many employees you want. If you want a good product to go out, you need it to be there. Uh, we have an old saying in Italian. L'occhio del padrone ingressa il cavallo. The eye of the, the owner uh, makes the horse fat. Along you are there, everything is fine. I know that doesn't sound too good in English, but... Oh, goodness. What do now, we have here? This is the sfogliatelle. It originates in Naples and sort of considered like a breakfast pastry. And it's got semolina, ricotta That's cheese, it's all yeah. mixed yeah. with the yeah. eggs, and yeah. got a little fruit in. So that it's a hundred percent way better than uh, when you get, get a Dunkin' Donuts. Authentic. And, uh, also healthy. Mm. Less calorie and good for you. Good. Let's try it. That's good. Delicious. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm your host, Lauren Mandel. Thank you so much for watching Sweet Talk. And don't forget to check out Maria's Pastry Shop in the North End. We'll see you next time. Fumami, located at 225 Franklin Street, is a real hidden gem that mixes Chinese, Japanese, and Korean-style dishes. The restaurant makes its own bread, which really helps define every Fumami sandwich. What's between the bread, with choices ranging from beef to vegetarian, is up to you. In addition to sandwiches, they make soups, salads, snacks, desserts, and specially made hot and cold beverages. The idea for uh, Fumami uh, really started when I was here uh, in graduate school. So uh, I, I spent a couple of years at Harvard Business School, and uh, when I was there, um, I spent my time doing some uh, research on the restaurant industry. I, I felt that an Asian sandwich bar uh, really fit was, uh, with what was going on uh, in, in the business. So that's really the basis of how this idea came about. And so people in the United States eat sandwiches for lunch. It's a $65 billion market. You know, why not an Asian sandwich bar? We can, we can make Asian sandwiches. You know, there's like, there's like over 5,000 years of uh, Asian culinary history. And uh, from, from my view, I think there's only maybe one or two percent of that that has ever been introduced to the U.S. There's so much more to Asian food than what America has been exposed to. The folklore says that there's a villager cooking a meal outdoors and the wind was blowing and it carried the scent into a Buddhist monastery. And Buddha, who has a very strict diet, he smelled the smell and it was so good and so enticing that he jumped over the wall to go and get a taste. So Fumami, uh, F-O, that's the English transliteration of the first character that means uh, Buddha. And Umami is a Japanese word that means uh, tasty or, or delicious. So Fumami really says what Buddha 
finds to be delicious. And what we're trying to say is that if you come to Fumami and eat our foods, you'll experience firsthand why Buddha was compelled to jump over the wall, meaning we have very delicious food. Yeah. Right, so here we are behind the sandwich bar of Fumami. Um, right now we're making a chicken cat sandwich, one of Fumami's signature sandwiches. Um, so let's Great. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, so the, the chicken katsu is basically we take a uh, whole chicken breast uh, mm. and we bread it with a Japanese uh, panko breading. Uh, Very nice. And uh, it's fried and uh, we put it uh, inside our sandwich with uh, shredded cabbage, uh, tomatoes, and uh, uh, katsu sauce. Now, just a little bit about the about the sandwich. Uh, the chicken katsu sandwich is actually a very authentic Japanese sandwich. Mm -hmm. So if you travel out to Tokyo, you'll actually be able to find the sandwich there. Um, we, uh, we, we put it in the sandwich with uh, a shredded cabbage and the Japanese actually, they, they serve cabbage with uh, a lot of the fried food because the Japanese believe that um, the cabbage alleviates a lot of the uh, negative things that people uh, have about uh, fried food. It actually counteracts, um, the Japanese pe people believe, um, the bad things about eating fried food. But, uh, so that's why, that's why chicken katsu is actually served uh, with uh, shredded cabbage all the time. And uh, also the, the, uh, the katsu sauce is really a uh, Japanese uh, uh, version of the Wor Worcester sauce. Uh -huh. So it's all made with uh, fruits and vegetables inside. Very cool. Yeah. Wow, that looks like an amazing sandwich. Really quick to make. It looks delicious. Uh, can't wait to start eating that. But first, we're going to go to Alex Castillo with Green Eats. Hi, College Kitchen. I'm here for Green Eats. My name is Alex Castillo, and today we are at Life Alive, an urban oasis here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We're going to go inside, check out some of their healing food, and have some good eats. Let's go. Everybody here just automatically recommends the adventure right away, but I love the Rebel. It has crunch, it has the zest and the flavor that the adventurer has, but it, it also has flax oil and hijiki seaweed, and it's not, you're not gonna taste the seaweed, but you are going to get like an amazing amount of nutrition. Emerson students especially are very busy. We're running from our internship to class, to our extracurricular activities, and all that running around leads us to be more prone to the flu. So if you feel like you have a cold coming on or the flu coming on, what might be a good remedy here? Everything on the menu. Our sauces are filled with lemon and garlic and ginger, and all of those things increase your circulation um, and uh, kill off microorganisms, so we're going to help your body heal in that way. All right, everyone, I'm here with Laura, a Life Alive employee. Laura, what are you going to make for us today? I'm going to make you a Love Alive. A Love, a love Alive? Love Alive. What exactly is in a Love Alive? Uh, well, there is strawberry, blueberry, banana, and dates, and then almond milk that we actually make here. Great, sounds good to me. We got the Rebel. Let's go ahead and take a dive in, get some sauce. Excellent. And what's great about this dish is that the nutritional yeast sauce actually gives it a really almost cheesy, rich flavor, but with all the added benefits of the nutrition. All right, we got the adventurer here with a colorful mix of corn, beets, broccoli, dark greens, shredded cheddar, tofu, and tamari almonds, all over quinona, and short grain brown rice. We also got a side of squash here for a colorful and adventurous meal. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's so good. Be sure to come to Life Alive, especially on Thursday nights where they have live music and bands right downstairs. For College Kitchen Green Eats, I'm Alex Castillo. Bon appetit. All right, welcome back to Fumami. Uh, right now we're going to be making a uh, grilled pork loin, spicy grilled pork loin? Yes, right. correct. All right, um, so can you tell us a little bit about this sandwich? Okay, great. 
Uh, well, the spicy grilled pork loin is another one of my favorite sandwiches. Um, if you like spicy food, this is definitely uh, the way to go. I do like spicy food. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I would say probably this is our spiciest sandwich. Great. Um, we use um, uh, pork loin, and it's marinated in a uh, chili pepper uh, marinade that we make here. Wow. Uh, and then we grill, we grill the pork loin, mm -hmm. and we put it into our shelving bread. Uh, and it's topped with uh, pickled carrots. Uh, some uh, cucumbers, cilantro, and then we top it off with uh, some more uh, chili pepper sauce. Um, wow. If you like uh, bami sandwiches, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe you would really like this one. I, I call this um, really more of a refined bami sandwich. Okay. Uh, and I think it's a lot better. Um, the ingredients are, are, are very lean and it's very fresh. Great. Um, so it's a healthy sandwich. Yes, <laughs> it is. Great. Wow, it sounds like it's really filled with flavor. Oh, <laughs> There's yes, it is. So many ingredients in this, in this sandwich, but it sounds like they all complement each other really well. Yes. I'm really excited to get yes. into that. We just made a grilled spicy pork loin sandwich. It looks delicious. Really excited to get into it. We're going to go to a quick commercial, uh, and when we come back, we'll be making a salad here at Fumami. Okay, uh, and now we have the uh, katsu wasabi Caesar salad. Um, looks really good. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is one of our uh, more popular salads. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, you know it's a it's a Caesar salad, but it's uh, a lot more than that. Uh, we we toss the salad with a uh, house-made uh, wasabi Caesar dressing. Wow. Uh, using Japanese uh, wasabi, it, it, there's a little bit of kick to it. If you like wasabi, I think this is very good. Great. Um, we toss it in the salad with uh, shredded uh, Parmesan cheese. Uh, there's croutons and uh, the chicken katsu uh, chicken that we use for our sandwiches. We also use it here for this salad. Mm -hmm. uh, we cut into cubes and uh, it's placed on uh, on the salad itself. Um, you know, gives it a lot of uh, you know great texture. Um, it's, it's a uh, wonderful salad. I would say this is probably one of my favorites here. Awesome. Yeah. So the uh, dressing is, is it just wasabi or is it a wasabi blend with something else? Uh, well, it's wasabi. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's your it's the it's a typical um, uh, Caesar dressing, mm -hmm. uh, except uh, we add a few more ingredients inside, uh, right. like the wasabi to. Um, to give it more a kick. Bit more of a kick. Yes. Uh, and now we're going to check in with Dominique for a CK Gourmet and then Pat and Dan for Man Food. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of CK Gourmet. I'm your guide to finding the finest gourmet restaurants in Boston. Today I'm here currently at the Bina Alimentari, a gourmet shop attached to the Bina Austria, a luxurious Italian restaurant nestled in the heart of the theater district. Let's head inside and see what the hype is all about. What makes Bino Osteria and Bino Alimentari a great pair is that there is nothing else like it in Boston. And don't take my word for it. Boston Magazine just recently had a review and they claim that uh, Bino Osteria is one of a kind, not like any other restaurant that you can find, perhaps even in the North End. So you have to just come and try it yourself. Bino Osteria's menu breaks down to various sections. Stutzakara is perhaps one of the most popular sections with tiny little tidbits uh, for $3 each only. And they're wonderful because they come in vegetarian, in seafood, as well as meats. So basically, you can have a mix and match of various items that you can have, again, for just $3 an item. Bean Alimentari is our gourmet food shop that's attached to Bino Osteria. And the Alimentari opens much earlier than the restaurant at 8 o'clock in the morning. We serve coffee, pastry, uh, various baked goods that you can pick up on the go. Now I'm here with three of the 12 small plates, only $3 a plate. First we have here the pepperonata, pepper bruschetta, and here we have the vongole, which is baked clams, Bina's own pancetta, and garlic crumbs. And lastly, a lamb meatball coated in goat cheese fondue. Let's take a bite. Definitely my favorite. The vongole is definitely something you don't want to miss out on. Every single bite is bursting with flavor. The garlic crumbs to die for. 
Being in Osteria and being in Alimentaria are a dream come true for my sister and I. We always wanted to have a side-by-side -side gourmet food shop, an Italian restaurant, like nothing else in Boston. And of course, we've made that dream come true when we opened this two and a half years ago. Being in Osteria is lucky to have a cross-section of various people that come here, whether they're theater goers, whether they are Emerson students, or whether they are from the various neighborhoods around us. We're lucky to have a great following from all around the city of Boston. Looking for a place to indulge in finer foods? Then the Vina Osteria is a perfect place for you. A menu filled with high-class items, Vina also offers small, cheaper options for trying new things. For CK Gourmet, I'm Dominic Fanias. It's been a good time. What's up, everyone? I'm Patrick McDonald. And I'm Dan Hochstein. And welcome to Man, Man Foods. Foods. Today, we're checking out one of the hottest burger joints in Fenway, Tasty Burger. They got burgers, fries, shakes, hot dogs. Right, we're even checking out their Tasty Burger Challenge, probably the manliest thing in the city of Austin. So let's check it out. Yeah. Going in there. Yeah. Tasty Burger is located at a converted gas station behind Fenway Park, closest to the Kenmore stop on the Green Line. It's an old-style American fast food burger joint, and all the fries, shakes, and burgers are made to order. They've got local artists' work, a free pool table, and a digital jukebox with great music. All the way dog is a half pound old neighborhood hot dog. It's got a third pound, third of a pound hamburger patty on it. Bacon, chili, cheese sauce, the bun is topped with scallions. <coughs> the challenge, you have to eat three of them in under an hour. We've probably had 60 people try it. Only, I think, six or seven have actually been able to do it in that hour. You know, it's, it's no joke. So we have three dogs in yeah. an hour. All the way dogs. Each one is a pound and a half of food. Get away, fly. Five pounds of food. One hour. We need a strategy. What should we do, Dan? Well, obviously, we each have to eat one and a half all, all the way dogs. The killer here, I think, is bread. OK. In my opinion. OK, so are you thinking that we take uh, the hot dog, the burger, and the bacon, we eat all of it first, and then we go for the bread? I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. For me, I think my perfect strategy would just be to just not think Take about it. it. I'm going to zone Take out. It. I'm going to uh, drink constant water. Uh, and I think I, I'm a little intimidated, Dan. Right. Here we go. The inaugural bite. Let's get everything in there. Let's get the meat. Let's get the meat. Let's get the meat. And let's get the cheese in there. How's yeah. that sound? Sounds great. Three guys. kinds of meat. I think we're eating small farms right now. <laughs> no. To men. <laughs> so to John men. Wayne. And men. And rifles. Rifles. Mm. Mm, oh, God. You know, that hot dog is really, really good. Mm. This is going to be a piece of cake. I'm ready. So easy. So we tried the Tasty Burger Challenge, and with 19 minutes left, we've decided to resign. But we still tried. We're still manly by Emerson College standards. That's right. So thank you to Tasty Burger. And signing off, I'm Patrick. I'm Dan. And this has been Man, Man Foods. All right, I'm about to eat my face off. Um, special thanks to everyone from Mommy, especially uh, owner Michael Wang. Um, and here we go. I'm going to start with uh, the salad with the wasabi dressing. Wow, that's really good. And just like you said, the wasabi in the dressing really gives it a, a really nice kick. Turns it from a regular Caesar salad to an Asian Fumami Caesar salad. And the chicken mixed in with it. So good. So delicious. All right. All right, moving on to the uh, chicken katsu sandwich. Um, looks delicious. Here we go. There's a lot of sauce, but it's so good. What hits me first is the bread. Um, really crunchy exterior and a fluffy interior. It tastes really good. And the sauce is really good too. Um, it really is like the dominating taste in the sandwich. Um, but the chicken and the, um, the tomatoes and the cabbage all come together and complement it. Really a great tasting sandwich. All right, now on to the spicy grilled pork loin. Wow. It's really
really spicy, um, which I personally am a fan of. Um, if you like spicy food, that really hits you first. It's really a, a kick in the face of spice. <laughs> in a good way. Really delicious. You really taste the carrots, which is interesting, because there's a lot of pork, but the carrots really come out. It's really delicious. Definitely suggest this one. This one might be my favorite. Really good. So as you can see, really enjoyed everything we made here from Mami. Um, another special thanks to uh, Michael Wang, who let us come here and eat some of his delicious food. Uh, and of course, thanks to our correspondents, uh, Lauren, Dominique, Alex, Pat, and Dan. Um, I'm Jeremy Sender, and we'll see you next time on College Kitchen.